Now, most players have such a hard time with this specific element, which is why the drop shot is so effective. Now, here's a shot that you can add to your game, and that's the drop shot. And I'm gonna give you three lessons to help you use it to win more points. But I should warn you, you should only continue watching this video if you wanna win more points. Now, if you're ready, go ahead and keep watching. Now, the first lesson is about the positioning. And the truth is that the, the quality of the drop shot almost does not matter. So it doesn't matter how good your drop shot is if you use it at the wrong time and if you're in the wrong position to do it. So talking about the position that you wanna be in, and that is this. A simple rule of thumb is you wanna be inside the court when you hit that drop shot and you want your opponent to be outside the court. So the further back your opponent is or the further away your opponent is from your target, let's just say your target is right here, the further away they are and the longer the distance, the longer it's gonna take them to actually run that shot down, which is what you want. The shorter that distance, the easier it is gonna be for them to actually get there. So you wanna increase that distance, and ideally you want them as far back or as far off the court as possible. Now on the flip side of that is, you wanna be as close to your target as possible because the closer you are to your target, the less that ball travels through the air, meaning giving your opponent less time to actually run that down. And that part is actually a lot more important, especially at the recreational or the club level. So being in the right position is 80 or 90% of the battle. Because even if you hit an okay drop shot, but you're in a good position, you're still gonna win a majority of the points. But that brings us to the actual execution and the technique. So let's get into lesson number two. Now here's a great example of Alcaraz being inside the baseline, whereas his opponent is far behind the baseline. And again, the further, back your opponent is the longer the distance that they have to cover. So this is a really smart play when Alcaraz is slightly inside the baseline and his opponent is far behind the baseline. Now the second lesson is about the execution. So there are three things that we want in a good drop shot. It should be short, it should be low, and we want to generate an angle. Now starting with, the, with keeping it low, the lower you keep that ball, the shorter it's going to be in the court. So a simple rule of thumb in tennis is the higher you hit it over the net, the deeper the ball is going to be in general. I know there are exceptions to it, but in general, when you keep that ball short, or so when you keep it low, you also keep it shorter. And when you keep it low, even if your opponent gets there, the lower that ball, the harder it is to attack. So by keeping it low, it, you're going to make it tough for them, no matter how quickly they get there. But that brings us, in the, in the second part of that is, and we want to keep it short. So by keeping it short, we obviously increase the distance that your opponent has to run to actually get to that ball. So again, if your target is here, let's say this is where you hit your drop shot, and when your opponent is further back, they have a longer distance to run when that ball is short. And the later they get there, the tougher the shot, the more likely they're going to miss or hit something weak. And again, that's exactly what we want. We wanna, we wanna win the point with our drop shot because after all, a drop shot is an aggressive kind of shot because an aggressive shot is any shot that is designed to win us the point. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. So keep it low, keep it short, but why the angle? Well, it's simple physics. So if you hit a ball and we hit it straight ahead, so let's say you hit your drop shot straight ahead, once that ball bounces, guess what it's gonna do? It's gonna keep bouncing and it's gonna bounce more towards your opponent. So your opponent doesn't actually have to move too much to run that shot down. However, if let's say we angle the ball off, or so we hit it at an angle, it's gonna actually move off the court, and now our opponent has to run a much further distance. So by hitting the ball at an angle, we're increasing the distance that our opponent has to run, which means they're less likely to set up a good shot, so they're more likely to miss, or they're more likely to hit a weaker shot, which again, is exactly what we're trying to do. But that brings us into lesson number three. Now before I show you the technique and a few technical tips on the drop shot, smash the like and subscribe button. And if you really wanna take your game to the next level, check out some of the other videos on my channel. But getting into lesson number three, and that is the technique. So the technical part is not that complicated. And really keep it simple here. So first, use a continental grip. Now a continental grip is when both your index base knuckle and the heel pad of your hand are on bevel number two. So bevel number two, we always start at the top. So if you if you have your racket with the strings facing to the side, we always start counting from the top. And if we're a righty, we're gonna count to the right. 
and if we're lefty, we count to the left. Now, a, a racket has eight different bevels, so bevel number two would be the one that's at a 45 degree angle. So one, two. So we wanna make sure that both our index knuckle and our heel pad are on that line. As you can see right here, they are gonna be here. A common mistake that I see players make, they grip the racket more like this, and what happens this way, maybe the index knuckle is on there, but as you can see, if I, if I let go, the heel pad of my hand is actually exposed. So a simple tip is just relax your hand a little bit and it's almost like you're shaking hands. So make sure both the index base knuckle and the heel pad of your hand are on bevel number two so we have a continental grip. I think of your racket as an octagon. So our racket has eight different bevels and we wanna place our heel pad on, and our index base knuckle on bevel number two. Now, if you're righty, that's, go that's bevel number two. If you're a lefty, bevel number two is over here. So you always start counting from the top and then you go, meaning top being this one, and then you go clockwise if you are a righty and counterclockwise if you are a lefty. So just make sure you keep both your heel pad and your base knuckle on bevel number two. Number two, it is a high to low motion. So it is, just like a slice, we start high to low. However, what I would recommend is we're not really trying to hit a slice. We're actually trying to hit a chip. And the difference on that is a slice is a longer motion, and the longer our motion, the more complicated it is going to be, and the harder it is to control. So if you want to keep it simple, make it a short, simple motion. That's it. The shorter you, you keep that motion, the simpler it is, the easier it's going to be to control. So, continental grip, low to high, and make it more of a chipping motion, which is, which is a shorter motion to control by. And after all, there's one more tip that I want to give you on the technique, and that is this. Relax your arm. A drop shot is also about finesse, so we want to have a more relaxed arm to give us a little bit more control over that shot. We want to have, we want to feel that shot in our rack. We want to have a little bit of a, of a feel on that racket, right? We're not trying to hammer that ball, we're trying to have finesse on it. So taking a look at the swing and the technique, we have to take a look at the length of the swing and what the grip does. So just take a look at the length of the swing. We go here from tip of the racket facing up to tip of the racket facing to the side on contact. So again, it's a very short little motion and you have to have a soft wrist and you have to have a soft arm to have that control. So see how that wrist is really doing a lot of the work here? It's a, it's a short little motion and that's about it. The second part is we wanna take a look at the grip. Now here, it's a little bit harder to, to see here, but he's not using a perfect continental grip. Actually, he, it looks like he's using a little bit more of an Eastern forehand grip, but the idea still is you wanna try and have a grip that's more designed to make that racket open up a little bit so we have a little bit of air under that ball. So I would suggest using a continental grip, but you can also get away with an Eastern forehand grip. Either way, you wanna have a soft arm and a short swing. And remember, remember you wanna try and aim low over that net. So continental grip, high to low, make it a chipping motion, which is a shorter motion, and then make sure we relax the arm a little bit so that way we actually feel the ball. And the last thing to understand is though, the intention behind it. Now lesson number four is about why it's effective at the club level. Number one, players at the club level typically are not as fast as players that you see on TV. So a drop shot is a lot more likely to win you the point because they're either not gonna get there or they're a lot more likely to miss or they're gonna give you something very weak in response. So it can be a really effective shot. But also, and this is often one of the elements that I see players who struggle the most. That is depth recognition. So players at the club level, they're gonna struggle a whole lot more at recognizing when that ball is gonna be that low and that short. That's why it's such an effective play, and I think it's something you should add to your game to win more points. Now, what you should do next, though, is click this video to improve your approach shot, or click this video to generate massive power on your forehand.